UFC 264, Conor McGregor, Dustin Poirier, you guys. Conor McGregor steps back, rolls his ankle, and snaps the tibia and the fibula in the process, losing the fight due to doctor's stoppage. Now, there was a moment earlier in the round, halfway through round one, where there was a standing exchange. They clinch up, they land against the cage. Dustin on the outside, Connor on the inside, Dustin's going for a takedown, and Connor wraps the neck for a guillotine. He attempts to pull guard, Dustin defends spectacularly, gets past his legs, has a headstand, inverted guillotine defense, one of the first we've seen of this kind in MMA, and successfully neutralizes the guillotine, slips his head out, ground and pound for two more minutes before they stood up, and the round, of course, ended in the dramatic way that it did. That guillotine interaction was amazing. Defensively, incredible defense by Dustin Poirier, the inverted guillotine defense, using the posture principle we're gonna to discuss today. And for Connor, there was a moment there, ladies and gentlemen, where it could have been closed, if not for the slightly more precise use of the velocity principle, principle number seven, he would have sealed the deal there. It was a very tight, very close guillotine. So I wanna discuss what happened exactly and what could have happened if for the use of that velocity principle a little bit sooner. So I brought my friend in today to demonstrate here with us, Black Belt Armand, student here at Grace University, very dedicated practitioner. Thanks for being here. Huge honor, man. Since I was a white belt, man, this, is, this has been the dream to be on a breakdown. It's huge. We're here. You guys. So let's talk about it. Round one, they clinch up. You're Dustin. I'm Connor. They end up against the cage over here. Let's move this way a little bit. And uh, Dustin's on a single leg with his head outside. Look, Connor wraps the neck, gets a hold of his own hand right here. Okay, and then at this point, right when he locked his hands, Dustin controlled the secondary leg, and Connor takes his leg and kind of throws it up a little bit here on Dustin's back, simulating that he was gonna pull guard. But when he did it, he didn't fully commit. And as a result, the leg went up, they kind of fall down. And at this point, he stands up, he inverts himself. Look at this. So Dustin walks up on the cage upside down with his head on the ground. And while Connor's trying to get his legs back in the fight here, Dustin controls his bicep on this side. He grabs his bicep. And once the hands were unlocked, Dustin goes back to his knees, knowing that because the hands are unlocked, he's good to go. Okay, and then from there, he walks a little bit to his left. He lets Connor close guard. He clears his head out of here because it's a one-handed guillotine at this point and there's no more power. Dustin slips out, ground and pound for two more minutes. They eventually get up and the fight ends on the broken leg. So the point is Dustin understands something very important about guillotines. The golden rule, which we'll do it here a little more in open space, which is anytime your neck gets wrapped in a guillotine, your defense is to get to the opposite side of the choke. He wants to jump over. The problem was he couldn't jump over because there was a cage right next to him. So what was so spectacular here, come on back Armand, what's so spectacular is when the neck got wrapped and they pulled guard, he jumped over and inverted and balanced on the wall because there was no space for him to descend to side control on the opposite side of the choke. And then at this point, Connor didn't know what to do with his legs because he couldn't close his guard. Uh, right here, D Dustin is effectively blocking his upper thigh, so Connor's leg is restricted, and then eventually Connor's hands loosen up and Dustin gets a hold of his bicep. Dustin knows that once this bicep is grabbed, there's no more guillotine, so he goes back down, he's safe to descend. So the, the understanding of the posture principle, Dustin knew exactly the posture that Connor needed, which is locked hands, closed guard. And he positioned himself so amazingly upside down against the cage until Connor lost faith in achieving the proper guillotine posture and control and finishing position. And as Connor started to lose faith in the choke, Dustin settles back in, blocks the bicep, slips his head out, and perfectly defends the situation. So everyone wants to know, could Connor have finished the guillotine? The answer is once we hit the ground and Dustin made that crossover and was inverted, no. He was too well positioned relative to Connor's legs. So the golden rule for guillotine, if you're getting caught, you always have to get to the opposite side of the choke. And for the attacker, the person doing the guillotine, it's the same golden rule. If you catch someone, you never wanna let them get to the opposite side of the choke. So if I'm here, I wanna catch Armand here, but I wanna close my guard because now he cannot jump across over here, he's locked. So catching his hips is the key detail, especially if it's an armless guillotine. Look arm, I just have the pure neck. If you have the arm and the neck, there are a few other variations like having my shin across your belly. Let me jump over here. Like this shin and like a modified guard here. That's okay because if arm on rolls north, I can transition into the anaconda, which is great, but only because I had his arm in the party here, okay? So let's go back up. So if it's an armless guillotine, pure neck, the only successful guard pull is closed guard. But in order for that to have been done for Connor against Dustin in this situation, Connor had to pull the trigger sooner and with more conviction. The one thing that we saw is when you wrap a neck on a pure neck, if you just bring one leg up and you sit down, 
it's going to be too long before your guard is locked. And because the guard remained open that long, Dustin was able to capitalize and get to the safe side for his headstand inverted guillotine counter, essentially. So, we've seen this before, and this is the only way it goes. When the neck gets wrapped, he's hugging the leg here, I wrap here, you go to both. The only way is if you jump close guard. But did you notice how my, both of my feet left the ground before my body hit the ground? Let's go back up. Instead of, instead of wrapping the neck, look, one leg goes up and sit down, and now he's able to jump over and get past and clear the safe side. So you have to commit both legs on the standing. The way I say it is whoever controls the descent, right, we're standing and we're going to the ground. Whoever controls the descent into a guillotine on the ground from standing will control the guillotine on the ground, right? So whoever initiates the descent. So right there, Connor put his leg up, didn't fully commit to the closed guard, and as a result, his legs were unlocked, and Connor and Dustin was successfully able to jump over to the safe side, invert, and neutralize, eventually fight the hands, and work his way out. So we talk about the velocity principle. The velocity principle. Constantly changing your operational speed throughout the fight so that you always keep your opponent guessing. The easier analogy for this is if Armand and I were in a foot race, we were standing against the wall, and we were going to go and run across the room, who has the advantage? Whoever says go. So are you ready? Go. I'm already gone. So it's too late. I already knew I was going to say go before he knew he heard the word go. And when he heard it, he still had to process it. And I was already taking off. That's why they don't let people say go who are in a race. The guy shoots the gun over there. Pow. And we all hear it at the same time because who's in the race can't say go because they have an advantage. When you're in a fight though, you have the opportunity to use the velocity principle number seven to say go when you wanna go. And it felt that Connor committed to the choke but did not quite commit to the full guard pulling process. We've seen examples of this. Brian Cub Swanson, classic right. example. I said he wrapped the neck and he went. Brian did not hesitate to go jump and close full guard in one fell swoop. And as a result, Cub had to deal with all that while his neck was being compromised and they were floating in midair throughout that process. So, rule number one, always get to the opposite side of the choke if you're the defendant. If you're the attacker, never let them pass your legs. And rule number two, whoever controls the descent in a guillotine guard pull situation. If the takedowner controls the descent, he controls the survival opportunity on the ground. If the guard puller, the guillotiner, controls the descent based on their rapid initiation and proper application and positioning of the legs during the guard pull, if they say go, they win the race. So absolutely... Connor's rap was legit and the opportunity to finish the fight and win and have a whole different outcome. Imagine the outcome had Connor jumped and crossed both legs. The whole world would be singing a different song right now. It would be crazy, that's but a, it yeah, didn't happen. That's a lot of confidence to want to jump guard. Yeah. It's a lot. You can't. Yeah, and that's a good point. You can't be halfway. Yeah. You got to go all the way. If you wrap the neck, here's the rule. If you're going to wrap the neck standing, you have to have the confidence to close guard in the air to accompany that wrap. There's no such thing as wrap the neck and go, okay, let's see how this goes. I might pull guard, I might put my leg up halfway and then sit down and see if he just sits there and then I'll, you can't. There's only one standing guard pull on the guillotine, which is the one that brings full hips, full lock while you're still standing and your, their neck is still wrapped. Okay, that would have been it. And that's, there's talk of them fighting again. I don't know what anybody's opinions are. If you wanna see it again, if you don't wanna see it again, all I'm saying is there was a legitimate threat there. And unfortunately, when the guillotine didn't pan out, Connor was on the bottom, you know, took a little bit of damage for the next couple minutes, and then the freak accident happened. So there are a lot of questions, there are a lot of unknowns, but one thing that isn't questionable is Dustin's defense to that guillotine could not have been better. His awareness of the legs, his clearance to the safe side, and his inverted headstand while he manipulated the grips to slip out, truly a spectacle. Really smart of him to jump into the guard once he had the one hand. After the hands were unlocked, not only, guard. Connor didn't even try to pass, uh, Dustin didn't even try to pass the guard. Once the hands were cleared, he purposely put himself into closed guard to allow Connor to stay on the bottom of the fight, knowing that Dustin would win the rest of the round and be able to put some punishment on there. Um, and if not win the fight in that round, at least win the round by having that two plus minutes of ground control. So to put himself in closed guard, it's very deliberate, very timed. And, uh, and only once his head was clear though, did he do that because he knew there was no guillotine choke after the hands were separated and he had that bicep control in the opposite arm. Incredible fight, you guys. Very exciting. Great to see the 32 principles, right? Understand the fight through the lens of the 32 principles. Many of you guys already jumped on board. We launched the 32 principles part one in June and now we're gonna launch part two at the end of this month, July 31st, 32 principles part two. The second eight uh, block of eight principles is coming out very soon. We're excited to share that with you guys. And um, our friend, 
Armand has a school that he's opening up here in Laguna Hills, California. Beautiful town over here. One of the nicest kind of coastal towns here in California. And um, if you're in the area, you gotta definitely go check them out. South Orange County, you know, hit me up next month. We're looking to open. Follow us on Gracie Jiu Jitsu Laguna Hills on Instagram. Certified training center and chiropractic doctor. So it's one of the few, if not the only CTC that offers both services. So we're happy to have them on board. Happy to have representation in Laguna Hills. And definitely go check them out if you guys get a chance and we'll make it happen. Thank you for the help today, bro. We appreciate it. And we gotta get to class and get to training this morning. But thank you guys for joining us, 32principles.com. It's going down this month. Dustin and Connor, thank you guys for the fight. Some of the antics before and after, people agree and disagree with, but the reality is it takes a lot to go in there and put it on the line, and uh, we learn something every time these fighters do, and for that, we're grateful. We'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers. Now what's gonna happen is there's gonna be monsters being made. So when they say the game is evolving, the game is evolving. When you have the recipe, it makes our life easier. You know, Henner, they put the principles in a way that anyone can understand. This is the first time in history that someone dedicated their time to develop this course based on principles. The 32 principles are the fundamental building blocks of all martial arts. This is something I highly recommend. Make sure you get your hands on it. It's going to make your journey much easier. It doesn't matter what your goal is. The 32 principles for sure will help you in your journey. The principles of Jiu-Jitsu saved me various times in MMA. Once you learn the 32 principle, everything in Jiu Jitsu will make more sense for you. I'm positive you're going to level up your Jiu Jitsu.